The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce the solar shading options available in Design Builder. You can use these in your model to help avoid summer overheating and reduce cooling loads. During this tutorial I'll look at applying window blinds and shades, external glazing shading devices such as louvers, overhangs and side fins, and finally external shading using component blocks. Solar shading can be applied to our external windows and roof lights using the shading options here in the openings tab. These enable us to easily apply a variety of internal and external shading devices to our external glazing. Different shading options can be applied at all levels from the whole building down to individual openings. Selecting the window shading option enables us to apply a number of different types of window blinds and shades. including electrochromic switchable glazing. The blinds can be applied internally, mid-pane or externally to the glazing. These shading devices are not fixed and constant in real life so we have a variety of control options available which enable us to define the operating characteristics of the device according to anticipated usage. We'll look at these in more detail in later tutorials detail, uh, dealing with the simulation data inputs. Before I make any changes I'll quickly look at the results from a cooling design calculation run earlier. This shows that the external solar gains peak at around 8 a.m. in the ground floor east zone at about 8 kilowatts and 3.2 kilowatts at 6 a.m. in the first floor office as the direct solar component is not blocked by the roof level shade at that time. The gains peak at around 5 p.m. in the western zones with gains of around 8.8 .8 kilowatts on the ground floor and 9 kilowatts on the first floor. I'll now go to the ground floor east open plan office and apply some medium reflectance blinds to all the glazing in that zone. I'll set the blinds to always on for simplicity. Local shading devices are fixed overhangs, louvers and side fins which can be quickly applied to external windows using the local shading options. The general folder contains commonly occurring combinations of external shading devices but if your shading details are different you can easily copy and edit the library data to create your own bespoke model data. In this case I'll apply the louver device which projects half a meter to the ground floor west zone. Going back to the layout screen we can see and quickly check that the shading devices have been applied at every level. So I'll now rerun the cooling design calculation 
to enable us to compare the impact of the changes made to the ground floor east and west zones. We can see that the blinds used in the east office have had a huge impact reducing the peak solar gain by around 85% to just over 1 kilowatt. This highlights the benefit of applying such shading devices but should also serve as a caution to ensure that they are applied correctly due to the huge impact they can have on the building cooling loads and plant sizing. Reviewing the results for the ground floor west zone we can see that applying the shading has reduced the peak solar gains through the glazing from about 8.8 .8 kilowatts at 5 p.m. to around 5.6 kilowatts now at 6 p.m. Standard component blocks can be used to provide bespoke external shading as a feature of the building, such as the roof level shading applied in this model, or to represent adjacent objects such as buildings and trees which provide remote shading. When using component blocks as shading devices attached to the building fabric, you should ensure that the block is drawn on the external surface in such a way that it does not incorrectly shield the facade or roof from exposure to sunlight and ambient conditions. Here for example you can see that I've drawn the component block from the roof wall external corner so there is no artificial shielding of the building fabric rather than drawing one large overhanging block across the whole roof surface here which covers and shields the external surface of the roof. This particular model already has roof level shading applied on the south and the east aspects so I'll now add the shading on the western aspect. I select the add block tool and change the details to a standard component block using the rectangular perimeter shape. I draw on the shading in the plane of the roof by pressing shift to lock onto the highlighted surface selecting my start point and entering my dimensions I then set the block height to the minimum of 0.01 meters and press enter to create the block I'll now model the shading effect of a 10 by 35 by 10 meter high building by adding a standard component block to the east of the model building. Going to the Visualize tab, we can see the rendered view of the model. And the significant shading effect that we get from the adjacent building 
at 8 o'clock in the morning. Having rerun the cooling design calculation, we can see that the peak solar gain through the external windows on the first floor west block has reduced by around 40% to 5.6 kilowatts due to the addition of external shading. The results for the first floor east block show that the shading from the adjacent building reduces the original peak solar gain at 6 a.m. by around 85% to 0.55 kilowatts. Note that we can change the transmittance of the shading component blocks and also schedule them to provide shade at different times. This enables us to model the shading effect from deciduous trees for example which can provide valuable shade in the summer and then increase beneficial sunlight levels during the colder months after shedding their leaves. In this tutorial I've looked at the different solar shading options available in Design Builder and we've seen the significant impact that shading has on reducing solar gains in your building. In the next tutorial I'll look at the lighting tab where the selections we make have an obvious effect on the energy consumed by lighting systems but can also have a significant effect on the internal heat gains and the associated cooling loads.